Hello, this is Daniel and welcome to part 3 of the character modeling tutorial series. And I'll continue modeling again while I'm talking about a bit different stuff. Um, let me very quick apologize for the noise in the background. I noticed in the last part as well as in this part there is uh, the noise of my computer fan um, hearable. And yeah, sorry, I can't really help it. I mean, I could just wait until um, some other stuff that takes uh, some performance of my computer is done, but I, I don't think I have the time to um, yeah, do all that, but I hope you can do with it. It's not too bad. At least I hope so. And see, I'm going to continue this uh, model now uh, towards this year I will try to connect these parts and from there on uh, build up the mesh in this direction or to the top you know just whatever is better for us and we're comparing again the two references at this point trying to fit it as good as possible and you'll eventually end up with a similar result I think now for the cheeks I think I'm going to go to a 45 degree view for a moment and I'll try to do this by hand a little bit and then actually that didn't work out so well um, let's move those a bit in and yeah actually let's just adjust the complete uh, those completely new from 3d view uh, it's always good to have um, something like guidelines, th uh, three-dimensional ones, to help you keep the shape that you want to have. Because you easily lose volume in that area, because these kind of stylized characters have quite some large cheeks, you could say, I guess. And they are very important, you do not want to lose them, or it will look very weird. Um, yeah, I think, actually, th this just shows us the shape. I don't think we'll be using this edge here, because its topology would go very much against what we have already here. Maybe it's not so bad, but we'll see. However, I know that this one should still follow along uh, this edge down here that is defining our chin. Let's connect those um, like that. And of course adjust those from the front again. By the way, uh, always feel free to um, post your results um, in the comments. I'd be really glad to see some, some work in progress as well. Um, and of course at the end feel free to show me those works I'll gladly uh, give you some advice if you want that or just uh, in general I'd be happy to see what, what you uh, were able to do out of this video okay now here at the chin we're going to close this off for a simple just like that and we still have not a single uh, triangle or angle in the entire model, which is quite good, and I hope we'll be able to keep that up. Uh, yeah, that should do it. The closer vertices move together, the sharper um, that point will be. Um, so, you know, just move those a bit away from each other to create a nice little bit round chin. Yeah. Okay, now let's continue with, let's see, I think we're going to continue with the mouth right away and just fill that area up later on. That's the easiest way, I think. And I'm going to start with the lips from here, but before that I'm going to split this up. No, that was wrong. I want to disconnect those two, right, and move these ones away a little bit. 
All right, because we want to add another loop that goes around the mouth that will give some good deformations later on. So I'll connect those here so there is a f enough space for one more face loop. And I'll move those, uh, extrude those towards here. And just do a nice uh, turn around it. Make sure to keep this aligned as long as you know how many vertices are needed. Just so we won't have to change too much later on and just connect it like that. Actually the last one you can already connect right away with that one. <clears throat> okay that looks alright. Now adjust it from the side as well and here again you'll find yourself playing around a lot without reference, you know, it's not as reliable as it could be. I'm by the way wondering if any of you are using other references than this one. I think it's of course possible to just use um, a different character design to uh, follow along with the very same series. It would be interesting, I guess. Of course later on, once we do the class, it will not be so interesting for you but you know just an idea if you have any better references than this one well the, the advantage with this one is that you know I, I created it so you can do whatever you want with it you don't have to worry about um, you know getting problems with character designs or anything that were not produced by oh, that were produced by some company that doesn't like people copying it or anything like that. Feel free just to use it for whatever you want. I didn't mind it. Um, yeah, this is getting boring here. <laughs> um, later on in this video, I'll tell you a bit about that. So later on, once we will continue modeling this, um, but stay with just the body itself, not the clothes. Uh, the reason I do that still is not so much because I need to do it because you know there is cloth over it on top of it So it's actually not so important uh, But I on the one hand I want to learn more about a body in general uh, So I still model everything underneath the cloth as well and Also because we have in this character design some very loose cloths. It is a good thing to have uh, the body underneath because it will help a lot with the simulations later on uh, for the clothes and generally to, to because that's quite a complex shape here for example where you have those folds are here it will make us a lot that a lot easier so I guess you can look forward to that if you're interested in it or I am at least <laughs> no. yeah just continue this loop here and that looks kind of good. Now for the lips here, just we I, I'm, I can now delete those couple of vertices in here. We don't need those anymore. And I'll take this loop and extrude it and scale it along the z axis by 0 0.1 and then along the y axis by 0 0.3. That these are kind of some numbers that I remembered because they work really well on this. Now from the top here I'm going to scale it just down a little bit and move it a bit together to get something like that. Now we're going to add volume to the lips. So I'll select those in the front and move them to where they belong to. And do the same with the top. That's how I approach modeling lips normally and I found it works pretty well. Now of course you can go ahead and give the lips some um, a better shape, you know, how it is has this bump here normally. That will definitely look good as well. Now here the last loop and then scale it along the z-axis uh, by minus one 
and that should close the mouth. Now let's check a little bit on the inside before we leave this part to make sure that it really is good. So I'm, I'm purposely creating an intersection here that will guarantee us that the mouth is closed and yeah, we won't be able to see through it later on. Now, if we would decide to create a character that will talk later on, we would model something in here as well, because our mouth is obviously not empty. But for now, I'm going to leave that away. If we decide to do that later on, then of course we'll have to go back and add that. <coughs> Okay. Yeah, it, it still looks really weird, but we'll get this this all right over the time. And again, you can use uh, proportion editing to fix some Roth errors. And on also, uh, this one is a great one. If you use this one, just the ones connected uh, closely to to um, your selection will be affected. So the lower lip is completely unaffected while like this, the upper lip is unaffected. Um, that's pretty good for these kind of situations. So I'm going to turn it off again and change this a little bit because it looks weird. And yeah, let's just leave it like that for now. It look, doesn't look so bad, I think, even though we have still lots of space for improvements there. <coughs> Okay, yeah, I think that's enough again for today's video. Um, sorry for leaving you with a weird looking face <laughs> today. Yeah, but we'll continue this tomorrow or whenever the next video is uploaded and I see you then again.